My name's Tony Wheeler and I do a lot of travel. And I, I guess that really has been the story of my life, that travel has, has been something not only that I enjoy, but it's been a, a business and it's, it's been my life really. Well, I, I did engineering at university first of all, and then came here to London Business School. I was here for two years. So this, this was home for two years. Um, I'd only been here a week or so, and uh, the sun's shining, it's October, and I sat down on a park bench with, with a magazine I had. This young lady came up and sat down on the other end of the park bench, and well, I picked her up. She wasn't my wife then, but she was 12 months later. <laughs> When I graduated from here, I, I did the, you know, the standard business school thing that you, you look for the job you've dreamed about when you, you started, and I found the job I dreamed about. It was a job back in the car industry again, and it combined business and engineering, so you know, it was all what I wanted to do. But I, I, Maureen and I wanted to travel more, and at that time, this is the early 70s, and it was a time when people's horizons were stretching wider. You know, the Beatles were in, um, the Beatles were in India with searching for sitar music and the jumbo jets were coming in and these new airlines were popping up and there were all sorts of changes going on in the world of travel. And we decided that we would, uh, we would travel out to India. And we, we took a year off basically and they, the company I had the job with said they'd hold the job for me for 12 months. They said come back in 12 months. Actually, I never came back, but we, we bought an old car in London and we set off to travel east and we thought this car is so cheap that if it breaks down we'll just park it by the roadside and walk away. And it actually took us all the way to Afghanistan. We sold the car there and made a five pound profit and then we carried on and went down through Asia and hitchhiked through Thailand and Malaysia and ended up in Indonesia and met some New Zealanders with a yacht and hitched a ride on their yacht and ended up in Australia. But by that time we decided it wasn't a one-year trip around the world, it was now a three-year trip around the world. So the idea of getting back in one year for that job had just gone out the window. And during that year so many people asked us about what did you do, where did you go, how did you do it, that we decided somebody should do a book about this. At that time all the guidebooks and information that now is available just wasn't available. And we realized if we had trouble finding that information, other people would as well. And I, business school had trained me. I saw a market opportunity. Well, the first one was a, a book about traveling from Europe all the way across Asia and ending up in Australia. You know, that book amazed us how th there was an enthusiasm for it immediately. And I, we, we saw that and we thought, well, let's do another book. Well, I, I wrote that first one, which was called Across Asia on the Cheap. I wrote a second one a year later called Southeast Asia on a Shoestring. And then other people started to come to us with ideas for other books. And we dreamt up the name. We, we, we needed a name they could write the checks out to. And Lonely Planet was the name we came up with. Yeah, in fact, it's 40 years ago this year that the first Lonely Planet guide came out. So it's the 40th birthday of the company. I enjoyed it the whole time we were, we were running it, because you know, we sold out five, six years ago. But uh, the whole time we were running it, I enjoyed it. And it's like a kid, you know, kids grow up and they leave home, but you still want to keep an eye on them. I love writing, I still enjoy writing, but I don't necessarily want to just write guidebooks anymore, I want to write other things. I've just written a new book, which is actually being published by Lonely Planet, so I've still got that connection with them. I say that George Bush made me write it because as soon as President Bush said there's an axis of evil, the three countries that are so bad they're positively evil, well I thought, well I want to go there. I never went in with any sort of guards to look after me, and nor did I go in as an investigative journalist trying to delve to the depths of the problems of these countries. I went in looking at the way you or I would go there and think, well, why, why is this, why does this country have these problems? Yeah, I've got a house in London. One of the things after we sold the business is we, Maureen and I bought a house in London. So we have part of our year in Australia, part of our year in London, and then part of our year everywhere else. I've been telling people, you know, you divide the 12 months up of the year. There's six months in Australia and six months in London and six months everywhere else. And that, you know, uses up the 12 months quite well. 
It's a, it's a great city. I mean, London, you know, that, that old saying, you know, if you tire of London, you tire of life. We're in the Science Museum looking at a Vickers Vimy, the first aircraft to fly across the Atlantic. This was a World War I bomber. They took the bombs out and put more fuel tanks in. And in 1918, two pilots took off from Newfoundland, flew it across the Atlantic, they landed in Ireland, and then the plane flew here to the Science Museum in London. I mean, I fly across the Atlantic quite often, and now it takes five or six hours. It doesn't take long, and you go all the way from London to New York or Boston or somewhere civilized. It took them 16 hours. This thing had a top speed of about 140 kilometers an hour. And they were right out in the open. You know, when, the, when it snowed, the snow was in their eyes. And if anything went wrong, if they'd, if they'd had engine failure or something, they would have gone down into the ocean and there'd have been nobody there to rescue them. I am excited, you know, it's, it, it's great. If I had the opportunity, I'd jump at it. <laughs> I would, I would, you know, if you did, did tell me, would, would I rather do a flight in that or, go up with the um, Richard Branson's you know, little trip into space, I'd take that. I would. That would be exciting. We're at a branch of Patisserie Valerie, and it, once upon a time there was only one in London, in Soho, and now they're all over the place. And I used to do a lot of meetings in that original Soho branch of Patisserie Valerie. It was, the, it was my London office. I'm, I'm at home anywhere, I'm quite happy wherever I am. I've been here now for about four months, but in that four months I've been to America once uh, on business. Well, they're, they're always a mix, you know, they're partly business and they're partly, part, partly fun. Even the business is fun. I've been to Italy twice. I've been to Paris that was really strictly business. Then I went to China. I, I flew to Beijing and I came back from Beijing to London by train. You know, if I was looking at what places are hot destinations, China. You know, everybody's there interested in China. You know, it's, it's, such, it's so important economically. It, everything is changing so fast. I think lots of countries in Africa, people are always like Africa, you know, so they feel it's dangerous or something. And actually, I've had so many good trips in Africa. I'm still really enjoying travel at the moment. We do learn things from our travel. And I think that what drives us to travel, sometimes it is just people want to go somewhere and get away from work and lie on the beach and read a book, but sometimes it is learning things. You know, we, we all have different reasons for travel and I, I hope we all learn something from it, but sometimes the learning is only a very small part of the total experience or sometimes the learning is a major part. <laughs>